Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and we have Liz. One of the highly requested ones. I got her, Nathan, and Sean are the ones I think I need to do next. But we're like 5,000 subs away from 100,000. And I need your guys' help real quick because I wrote down my first 100 subs, right? And my thought process was I'll do something nice for them if I ever make it to 100,000. And this was before I ever did like a reaction video or anything like that. I was just kind of filming myself for accountability. And I kind of want to know what I should do. Because I'm thinking like I wanted to do something for each of them. But then I'm like that would be impossible to get a hold of that many people. And just like send them money or whatever. So I'm thinking like I just give one of you a thousand dollars or something. I just put all the names in there. And then that's one penny for every subscriber I've got if you were there at the start. Kind of just to show kind of a level of appreciation, just how grateful I am that people subscribe to me. But I kind of want to know your guys' thoughts on if that's a good idea or what I really should do there. There can be some really hard moments in life. And you can either use them as an excuse or as an obstacle to overcome. True. Okay, about my age. Well, I figured out why you guys wanted to see this one. What the hell? She's so proportionately weird and permanently in a split. me mama like a wagon wheel that lady's gonna throw her back out that's terrible like she's too old to be lifting that kind of weight oh god this is my life i've been bedridden for years and i have these four walls to look at and that's it i know it's gonna be the same thing every single day it feels as though my life is wasting away I can't even go sit outside on my porch. That's a tough one, but since she's bedbound, she's probably totally just no hope. Everything's so negative. It's tough. It's tough to stay in a good headspace when you're like in this position. Face down, ass up. Can't do nothing. And if it wasn't for my aunt, I don't know how I'd even survive. That's about the best I can do with that. Liz's life right now is just pure torture. She feels... I think I'd be in hell, too, if I, my legs were stuck in a flying V like that all the time. Because, look, she's on her side and she can't close her legs because her balls are in the way. I think I would pop a ball if I tried to, like, sit like that all the time. But by balls, the lymphedema is what I'm talking about. The balls on her leg. It feels like her life is a living hell. And she don't want to live in that bed. Lucifer's lasagna. I have to have somebody turn you over and change you. I hate it. <sighs> Giving Liz her bath, for me, it is tremendously hard. But I have to do it. I fight back. I knew this lady's back had to be going because that's like 300 pounds of leg she's lifting up there. Like, she's got more thighs than Popeyes. Come, let's be real here. Back to tears, and I pray all the way through the process. And that's how I make it through. Pray that leg don't come down and crush your head, lady. You're in the danger zone. When I see my aunt in pain, it's good, Richard. But the this is kind of funny when she's laying on her side, like her boobs are almost hitting her in the face, like playing attack on tatas on her face. Worst part is I started living here to take care of my mom, and I can't even do that. I need to come on that side because everyone has to take care of me. What exactly was she expecting to be the caregiver? 
because this didn't just come on overnight. This is not onset 900 poundism or anything like that. It doesn't just happen like, oh shit, we gained 500 pounds. So I'm ashamed. I've allowed myself to become such a burden. Uh oh. She's got timber. Ah, can't get it, Liz. I need help. Ugh. No, I gotta have help on this side. Damn. When your leg turns into a team lift, it's probably time that we make some changes here in life. Let me go get some help. And, uh, uh. I didn't think that I would hit rock bottom at 35 years old. Yep. Check out my gravel pit, because we're definitely rock bottom. And it's a, it's so tough, because nobody feels like they can climb out of it. At least I know that I felt it was just too much. But uh, the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave, so I'm still rooting for her. I hope she's going to do a lot better. It's devastating. I hate myself because I allow myself to get this size. Don't hate yourself. <laughs> Come on, Liz. Don't cry. I'm, I'm going to get it. So I need help. So what I need for you to do is this way. Stand so she won't fall. Okay. I'm not sure she wants to be underneath that either, but... When I'm watching the show, I always just look in their eyes, and I'm looking for this, like, dead look in their eyes that I know all too well. And I can just tell that this lady is just so friggin' down on herself. My mom calls family members all the time to help with Liz, but she just continues to get progressively worse. But my mom absolutely cannot continue to look after Liz at the current state that she's in. Man, when your calf starts to look like a drumstick, we probably reached a level of, like, food depravity we didn't need to get to. Is that a diaper? Liz needs medical care. Liz I needs a wall. I feel helpless every time I walk in the room. Uh-oh. Did you see the wall? Did they take the wall to get her out? I know they do that. Sometimes they go, like, demolition fat when they have to take out walls to get you out of the house and try to do something for her when she's really really so depressed and so sad so i just encourage her and help her and the only way she's encouraged is with food and liz eats a lot of food no shit, lady. This is brilliant. Let's go with bacon bribery. That's how we make her, like, shoot for the stars here. Compared to what I eat and what Liz eat, I can feed my whole family. Probably the town. But eating is the only thing that makes her happy. So if we don't feed her, it's going to be bad. What's going to happen? Like, I understand people find happiness in food, especially if you're stuck in bed. But this chick's going to have to be depressed. No more donuts. She's going to have to just fall into more depression here. Food is the only thing I can look forward to in my day. I enjoy eating. But afterwards, I don't feel good about myself feel like a failure because what I'm doing, how I'm eating, is still in my life and my future. Where'd they hide the damn cinnamon roll? I didn't see that thing at first. I love me a damn cinnamon roll. And who I was. I had hopes and dreams and I wanted a... Oh my god. She is getting... <laughs> She's giving like that... Oh, this is so good. Her eyes roll into the back of her head. I mean, I need to get me some of these cinnamon rolls. The things they do to the people on this show, the glass guy with the sausages, man, he was in heaven. Life. But the person that I used to be, that person is dead and go. And I don't know how to get back who I was. Uh-oh. We got cinder block chubby, too. Steven Asante did that. 
he got a foundation fat, as I called it, I think, in his episode. Dennis Rodman. When I was a little girl, I was a normal size. But I was born with an abnormality in my leg. The bone was curved, which resulted in one leg being shorter than the other. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. So she started out rough just from Jump Street. I walked, but I walked with it like a little limp. So I couldn't be as active as I would have liked to be. But I was still able to get around all right and do things. Yeah, you can see the brace right there. Man, it always breaks my heart to see a little kid suffering with something like that. Because you know all kids just want to fit in. And then she's stuck here, you know, being a little bit different. It was just harder. And some of my best memories as a child was going places with my dad. We could be going to the corner store. I just wanted to. That is a happy kid for sure. That's a hell of a smile she's got going right there. You could tell she just loves being with her dad. To be with him. So despite my setback, I remember my early childhood as very happy. That's good. But that changed when I was six. Because... There's no fish in that fish tank. <laughs> what the hell? I was <sighs> by someone that my family knew. Why? Why? It blows my mind that there's level, there's sickos in this world that would do something like that, take a child's innocence, man. It just makes me feel so sick every time I hear this. I remember being so alone and scared because I didn't know what to do or who I could tell. So I just felt ashamed. The cops. I don't know if my mom would have believed me. And I didn't want to tell my dad because we were so close. And I didn't want to make him see me any different. Now I just feel terrible. She's born with one leg like a deformity. This happens to her at six. At six, I was friggin' sitting there chugging sweet tea so I'd throw up before school so I could stay home and watch this Gargoyles cartoon. Like, I had not a care in the world. And she's gone through so much at such a young age already. So I kind of pushed it out of my mind because I didn't want to think about it. And I just tried to pretend it didn't exist. But as I got older, things got worse. My dad developed a bad drug addiction, so my parents got divorced. Damn, her state makes a lot more sense. I didn't have trauma like this. I just loved the hell out of food. He let that addiction supersede his wife and his child. After that, my life was never quite the same. I was about 10 years old then, and that's when I remember taking all that pain and starting to run to food. But I don't want her to think in any way that his addiction was him choosing it over them. Because that it just gets a hold of him. It takes him away. I don't think he was choosing. I mean, in a way, yes, he chose. But I, it's nothing against her at all that I think she probably took it like that as a kid. You, you know what I'm trying to say? I can remember Liz waiting on her dad with tears. And dad never showed up. So her escape was to go in the kitchen and eat to fill Got the back. void. If I was feeling bad or sad or upset, food would make me not think about what happened. It always pisses me off when I hear something like that because I just feel like kids always come first. It doesn't really matter what you got going on, what you want as a man, whatever, what you want to go do. You got to put children first. At least that's how I look at it. And as things got harder, I just ate more. Ooh, when I was about shit. 11, I had to go through seven corrective surgeries on my leg. Liz started having corrective surgeries, and then they put on her the cage, we call it. 
Oh my god, that's brutal. I couldn't imagine being a kid and having to deal with that. And the pins would go into the bone and hold it still. While I was recovering from each of these surgeries, I had to stay in bed all day. So that's when I started to really gain. And by the time I turned 13, I was old. That's 13? I don't know. I think I was probably about 300 at 13, so that looks about right, I guess. Over 250 pounds. Slow. And then at the age of 14, my dad had kicked his addiction for a little while. Hey. And when he did that, we started to get close again and pick back up with our relationship. But even though things started to get better with my father, my eating didn't slow down. I mean, the damage is kind of done at that point. She's already learned this unhealthy relationship with food to cope with her emotions, stuff like that. A lot of people message me about that. Like, they struggle with being an emotional eater. And I'm like, I don't really know what to tell you. You just got to learn to fight through it and just be tougher than wanting to turn to food for everything. So it, it, it's definitely a mental battle and a physical battle. As a teenager, she was getting fluffy and she just started to grow and grow. My mom. Fluffy my ass. We're foundation fat. We have cinder blocks under the corner of our bed. Like, I don't want to hear that fluffy Gabriel Iglesias, I think's his name, comedian stuff. Mom tried to put me on a diet, but it didn't work. Nothing did, so I just kept gaining. And by They did her dirty, by the way, taking a photo and putting it right next to the pots of food with her all happy as hell like that. By the time I graduated high school at 18, I was over 350 pounds. She's tiny. But even though I was still gaining, I didn't want to just be stuck at home all day. So I started volunteering at my church and doing daycare. I was large, but I was still able to do whatever I wanted to do. I don't think a lot of parents would want her caring for, because imagine the kids friggin', there's a car speeding at the kid. She's not exactly gonna get the kid out of the way. I mean, we could probably take on the car head on, but we're not gonna get the kid in time. But when I was 24, I crossed the 400 pound mark. And that's when I started developing lymphedema on my legs. I was 509. So that by started then. making it even harder to get around. And that's when my weight really spiraled out of the control. Because when I was 25, my mom got sick and I almost lost her. She had double pneumonia. She had many strokes and was hospitalized and almost Damn, she can't catch a break, can she? Died. And she never fully recovered from it all and needs dialysis now, but she survived. Mm -hmm. I was so scared during that time. All I remember is eating. And over the next five years, by the time What the hell happened? Also, does she own underwear, or can I just not see them? Has her thighs ate her panties? Is that a G-string? I don't know. By the time I was 30, I was over 500 pounds, and my lymphedema had gotten so bad. I stopped going out of the house because of the way people look and stare at you. I just watched TV, ate. It was here. I did the same thing though. I mean, I think my level of maturity was stunted by my fatness because I just spent too much time on the internet watching all kinds of weird stuff. I also know way too much stuff for a grown man about little Tay and her family dynamic with the dad trying to, you know what I'm saying? I just go down rabbit holes on the internet all day and get lost in it. Then when I was 33, my father passed. And when he passed, I couldn't make it to his funeral. I was not able to physically be there, at least to just lean over, hug him, or touch his face, or kiss him, or something. And ever since then, it just was downhill, and I've been stuck in the bed. I've never done the kiss at a funeral, touch the hand, anything. I'll cry and all that stuff. 
But yeah, I think the last time I was 600 pounds at a funeral was my grandfather a little over two years ago. And now I know I'm over 600 pounds and I couldn't get out of this bed no matter how bad I want to. And my weight has completely isolated me. So I have basically become a recluse. Most of the day I sit in here depressed and sad and food. I mean, that's kind of the breaks. If you're going to want to change it, you're going to have to do something about it. At the same time, what if you, there's like an electrical fire in there? Because she's going to be in trouble. Could she get up at all? Brings me comfort for the moment. But every day I'm... Oh, shit. We're a honey bun hoarder. Oh, no. Little Debbie, you devious little tramp. Getting worse. And every day my mom is getting worse. And I know I should be there for her, but I'm not. Oh, Mama Dukes comes to the room, huh? And they're eating spaghetti, and she... Okay, I mean, if they're bringing her the food, obviously we see who's the enabler here. And I hate forcing my mom to watch me like this because she's watching me die when I should be there for her. And I know if my family finds me dead in this bed one morning, that's going to be too much for my mom to handle. And she's going to die too. I that's definitely the way we're working, but it's never too late. She still could pull this out. I thought about the possibility of me having to bury my only child and I don't want to live without my baby. So they could just bury me right along with her. So I know I have to find someone to help me stop this and to change or my worst fears are about to happen. Do you think they make a coffin big enough though to do like a two for one here? Cause you could save like 10 bands if that's the case. Them coffins are effing expensive. Dr. Nazardin has set up a special bariatric EMS service to come get me. Hello? But I've not been out of my bed and outside for years. Should have brought a wider stretcher than that one. Also, her sheets are friggin' stained to hell. If I saw a white stain that big anywhere else, I'd think something devious happened, but I know that ain't the case. So I'm really worried about how this is going to work. This sheet here is underneath me, so roll that way. My biggest fear is being dropped or falling. I think these EMTs are worried about dropping you too, unless they've got steel toes on. Hang in there, Liz. Whoa, that was good. But I'm fearful of not being able to get this weight under control and dying. Ready? Almost there. Damn, that guy's about 300 short of Dr. Now's program. But I'm also kind of jealous I never got to go on a fat swing like that. And I know that if I was to die, that would literally kill my mom. All right, watch your arm, watch your arm, sweetie. So I have to do this. It burns, it burns. Get the light. It's like my 600 pound Buffy. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we don't do sun that much. So uh, I imagine that this is the face you would get out of us after we've been locked inside. My mom needs me right now. My mom is sickly. So I just hope and pray that Dr. Nazarna just approves me. Thank you. He ain't gonna, he's gonna make you work for it, but Dr. Now is definitely the man you need in your life right now. I'm nervous to see Dr. Nazarnan. 
I'm excited, but then I'm nervous. Getting help from them is my last option. Oh, my lord. Yeah, it's a little bit bumpy. I apologize. Sounds like that uh, Trillville song, Some Cut. I know nobody knows what I'm talking about. I'm not afraid of Dr. Nazardin being straightforward because that's what I need. And I prefer somebody to give it to me just how it is. And be too, truthful and honest with me. But my body is in such bad shape. And I don't know if it's too late for me. I can't believe they make a winch. Like, you get so fat, we need a winch. <laughs> That's nuts, man. You can go off-roading in a stretcher with that damn thing. So what scares me right now is if Dr. Nazardin is not able to help me and he turns me away. Who's with you? That's my aunt. Your aunt? Yes. It's good to meet you too. So let's discuss a couple things. How old are you now? I'm 35. The fact that you're only 35 and young is the only reason that you're alive right now. You know, there's no way you're living to your 40s like this. So you realize how bad your body is and how close to death you are. Damn, tell it like it is, Doc. That's the one thing I definitely respect about him. He ain't gonna sugarcoat anything. And that's why you're here, right? Yes, sir. So what are you doing about it? I've been trying to cut back some, but now it's just too far gone and I've been in the bed, you know, not able to get up to move at well, all. It's well, just when did we cut back? Shit, was it the pound of bacon, the Chinese food, or the jam cup, jam covered cinnamon roll? I missed the cutting back part. That must have happened off screen. It's We're not much. talking about your activity. We, mm. We're just talking about your eating habit. My eating habit. Don't, don't mix the issues. Oh, okay? okay. So eating habit obviously out of control, uh, but who is uh, proactive to make that changes? Me. Why haven't you changed so far? Just, just have it. I just. She hasn't ran out of honey buns yet in the drawer. You, everyone knows you can't start a diet until the honey buns are gone. Why? Do you just... like where you are? No, sir, not at all. So what do you do about it? I'm willing now to do whatever I can because I'm just at a dead end street, and it's like it's nowhere else to go. Well, the starting point is your eating habit, and you have to realize that you are the one that you're overeating, and everybody else is not forcing you to eat. They're not forcing me. They okay. don't make me. It's, it's, it's the choice. I know that it's the choices that I made. Okay. At least she's taking accountability, and everyone knows the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step, so... She can obviously start today. She ain't started yet, but she it's never too late, in my opinion. Okay. So from this point, we're going to have to make those changes. And if you're not able to make those changes, then there'll be nothing we can do to help you. I'm, I'm willing to make those changes. I want to make those changes. And your enablers need to understand how important it is to support you. She doesn't look like a person that's able to get up and go to the refrigerator or go to the kitchen and eat. Who's Bite your tongue, doctor, now. She's got a stash, obviously. I mean, I had a stash of, like, Skittles and Reese's. I think my rock bottom was when I woke up. I guess I was eating Skittles in my sleep, and I must have dropped some, and they somehow tie-dyed my balls, and I was like, eat the right... Taste the Rainbow had a whole different meaning to me at that point. That was like my rock bottom with food. Bring in her food. Wherever she could get it from. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have y'all noticed that she's overweight? And oh, yeah. This, uh, weight is helping to kill her, and that has to stop now. So this whole dynamic has to change, and it starts with you, Liz. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, let me check a couple things. How much you can do in the bed from si uh, turning side to side? Uh, I have to have help turning. My aunt's the one that helps me turn. Okay, let me see. Yeah, she definitely ain't got no bedroom aerobics going on, except for that split move she's doing. So I guess there could be, but uh, yeah, bedroom cardio is not part. Of... Actually, she's never mentioned having a boyfriend at all or anything like that. So I imagine her life's just been hell the whole way through with nothing going on with anybody.
see this mass on your leg. That's extremely big. Is that fungus? That white stuff? Or is that a scar? I swear that looks like some kind of thigh cheese growing in there. How long this mass has been here? It's grown the last couple of years. It's gotten bigger and bigger. That's what she said. And this side, you got to this mass. Yeah, I have here. that one here, and then I have another one here. So these masses are because of your body is running out of places to store fat, and that's where these masses develop from overeating. So I'm going to admit you in the hospital and start your 1200 calorie a day diet and get you to lose some weight so these masses can shrink. And the second thing we need to do is get you up and walking, and then we're going to see what option we got for you, OK? OK. She can drop weight pretty quick, though, at her size. Especially with, like, her proportions is so weird. None of the fat went up top with her. I mean, I guess her face is kind of chubby, but she didn't get the big melons like everybody else. The yiddies is just straight thigh meat. That's all she's got. All right. Uh, we're going to run some tests on you to see how things are and see what option we got for you, okay? Yes, sir. But before we do that, we need to get you in the room and check your weight now. I'm very concerned about Liz right now. Being immobile at her size for as long as she has been, she's already passed any sort of life expectancy estimates. And there is... Damn, that's a look of panic. She heard scale. Look at that. She just saw a ghost. That's kind of the same face she made when the sun hit her skin and it kind of burned. I imagine she's kind of having some kind of, oh shit, what's going to happen here move right now. There's no way she can survive too much longer in this state. So we need to get her weight down immediately and get her up and walking soon. But her lymphedema is abnormally large. So we will likely need to remove that, but we will have to get her body to a state where it will survive the surgery. I don't think there's been anyone on the show that I wanted to walk more. I, that Cindy lady who didn't try at all. I wanted her to walk. But hopefully she can get up and get moving here pretty soon. Because that would make a world of difference for her. But I'm very worried about her physical state right now. Because there is a good chance her body will give out very soon. And there will be nothing we can do to help her at that point. Okay, Liz. Let's see where your weight is at. And that's 400 pounds of thigh, too, because there's no way up top's more than three, man. That is a whole lot of ass and thighs right there. You are 721 pounds. Okay, Liz, I need you to understand how important it is that we get your weight down now because your situation is very dangerous, okay? You've been in bed, and if anything happened to you, you're not gonna pull through. Yes. You know? That 1,200-calorie diet, she can't cheat at all. I like when they do it at home, and they're kind of on their own diet, because then I get to see if they can sink or swim. She's kind of got to swim, unless, like, her aunt's bringing something in in the prison pocket for her or anything like that. She doesn't have any kind of James King thing going on here with, like, a secret relationship who's hiding, like, hot dogs in his uh no-no zones you know, if you develop blood clot in the leg or phlebitis and you have pulmonary embolism that can be very dangerous so we're going to start working toward getting you to the point that you're going to be able to lose some weight and be able to stand up do some walking and get back to normal activity okay yeah, they're definitely going to want her moving after surgery so she doesn't get, like, a blood clot. And then there's those injections they make you put in your stomach every morning and night so you don't get a blood clot. But they won't let you leave until you're up and walking around. Because they yelled at me because I had that fall risk bracelet on. And I was like, I feel fine. And I kind of dropped down in, like, a catcher stance. Those nurses lost their friggin' mind with me. I've been in the hospital for two months now. And at first, it was a big adjustment for me. 
The 1200 calorie a day diet was a lot less than I'm used to eating. Skippy, that's like three honey buns. So we were hitting that in like a five minute span of laying there in bed. But your body kind of adjusts after a little bit of time. You're starving at first when you start a diet, don't get me wrong, but it will adjust eventually. And I really missed my family. Hello. All right, so you ready today? Okay. All right. Here we go. And they've had me doing upper body exercise since I'm still having trouble getting up and up. I'm sorry. That face is funny. I'm sorry. But, I, man, I never got a fat zip line like that either. Makes me jealous every time I look at the damn thing. Out of it so far. Hold it. But I feel like I'm doing well, and I've settled into a bit of a routine now. Round two. We're going to do back to back. Here we go. Ready? Go. One. And today, Dr. Nazordan is going to see what my weight loss is. And ten. She's pissed off at that damn zip line. Look at that thing. She's about to take a bite out of that bar. Good job. We have been able to make significant progress with Liz's weight. But the scale on her bed has stopped working. So unfortunately today, we have to put her on the lift to see what her weight loss is at the two. What? We got a fat crane lift? That's insane. We get to go crisscross applesauce on the chubby scale. How do you break the scale? Did she gain weight somehow? Oh, it's still moving. Yeah, it's still going up. Five. Five, correct. Is it screwed up if my head just started playing, I came in like a red? King ball that would be friggin hilarious they should add music to this friggin show it would be hilarious dude and she's killing it by the way all right Liz you are 575 excellent so you essentially lost 146 pounds it's not just miraculous you know a miraculous thing but it's it's a start it makes me feel really good to see her happy and like usually it's tough because she's still up around 600 right so her spirits being up and everything like that makes a world of friggin difference because it's kind of hard to keep your spirits up because you're looking at years of dieting any of you think you could diet for three years like it sucks you're doing great but the concern is now that we need to get you up and walking as soon as possible. So to do that, we're going to send you to a rehab facility that will have more options to get you standing. Okay. Liz. Okay. So rehab facilities, obviously, if she sticks the controlled diet. But I don't think anyone's there bringing her food. We haven't seen her aunt or her mom show up or anything like that. So she's probably in the clear when it comes to that kind of stuff. Or she's just that motivated. She tells them no. We're going to work on attempting to stand. Okay. I've been here at the rehab facility for a month. Okay. And it's been really hard on me. They've been doing exercises with me. But I haven't been able to stand just yet. Okay. Yeah, with the one leg being messed up, I imagine it's going to be hard for her to stand anyway. Also, those Skechers are sitting sideways, man. Them puppies haven't been on there in a while. I have been able to start to sit up and get to the edge of the bed, which I feel is good progress. Because that's more than I've been able to do in a long time. But I know I have to stand to get my lymphedema surgery. So I'm trying every time to do it. I mean, you got to take the small victories. Even sitting on the side of the bed might not seem like much to you, but I'm proud of her for it. Are you ready? Or you want to give it a moment to see how your feet feel? They feel OK. All right. So you're going to lean on to the ball, and I'm going to basically hold from behind for any stability, we'll either going side to side. Okay. We're going to hold whose balls from behind here? Where the hell is this going? If you need it. Hold on. I'm trying to catch my breath. 
And it's just, the left one is shaking. It's just so hard because physical therapy is excruciating. It just hurts so bad. You could tell she's in pain, man. I would not expect anything different with her legs looking like that. I can't even imagine. But she's going to have to work through it because that pain is going to stick there until she loses the weight. So she's stuck in a terrible situation right here. It's like your legs are awakening. The muscles are coming back alive because I've been laid up so long. Go ahead and lay back. And I just have so much weight on my body still. And the masses on my leg start to hang down and pull and make it even more painful. So this is just really, really hard. Okay, I just use my legs. Yeah, we didn't think it was anything. Wow, man, that looks nuts. Kind of looks like one of those mushrooms. What are they? Like a portobello or something like that? Yeah, that, ooh. And the one side's so much bigger. You can see all the scars from like having that cage on her leg. That's crazy, man. I just can't do it. Get it. Get it. Help up. Wait, wait, that's it. It's discouraging that I haven't been able to do it yet. But I know I have to, so I'm going to keep trying until I do. When you first came in and you was touching it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't as painful, you know, but... She barely got off the side of the bed, and she's already kind of, like, moaning in pain. And this is going to be a hell of a long trip for her. If that's all it takes for her to be, like, in excruciating pain, man, I feel terrible for her, because she's got a hell of a lot of work left to do. Till you put weight on it. Yeah, once I start trying to put weight on it, then it just, uh-uh. Okay. We'll just have to keep building it up. That's just the main objective, to get on those feet. Trust me, I will go try to get it, because I'm trying. All right, have a good one. Awesome. She's going to have to build slowly but surely. It... And she's starting from, you got, like, one of the worst positions we've seen, where she can't even get to her feet. Because we see people that are bed bound, but at least they can stand up for like a second. She can't even do that. So she might be among, because Samantha was 940 pounds. She was still friggin' walking. Think about that. This lady can't get up at 715 or whatever she was. Somewhere along the line, she just totally gave up and said, this bed is my new home. I'm not going to walk at all anymore. And that left her here. So now she's got to fight her way all the way back. But she absolutely can. But it's going to be a hell of a fight. I'm very concerned Liz is running out of time. So we have to get her up. And surgery is the best option to move her closer to that. So we are doing an echocardiogram and running tests on her to even... Damn, so we just kind of raced into this here. She's going to get approved for surgery just like that because now it's urgent all of a sudden. We can see if we can do her lymphedema removal. But high risk factors of doing surgery on her while she's immobile are still a very big concern. The good news is that she continues to lose weight and is down to 506. Damn, she's cooking. Three months in, she's lost over 200 pounds already? That just goes to show you, when people say they can't lose weight, they can if they absolutely, like, lock in and kind of work their way into it like she is right here on this controlled diet. But with almost activity for years, her heart is my biggest concern because it may just not be strong enough to make it through surgery. And if we aren't able to perform surgery, then Liz has a limited amount of time to get mobile again before her. You know how hard it is for them to even get imaging of you at that big? I think they, when they did a, God, what's it called? The ultrasound or whatever on my legs? Or they, like, look at your kidneys? Whatever the hell they were looking at. They were looking at something down there. They could barely get, like, good imaging on me just because you're so big. Her health started to decline rapidly, and there'll be nothing we can do to stop it. 
My recovery has been tough. I'm certainly glad my lymphedema is gone, but it feels like I'm missing something now. You want to take it home with you? You could take that 22 pounds left of uh, thigh meat with you somehow. But I don't see what the hell you're going to do with it. Cuddle with it? Oh, that's so weird. She misses it? So it's just been a bit of an adjustment for me. I guess I'd miss my balls too, though. Hey, Liz. Hello, Dr. Nazarda. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How you doing? All right. Since we lost that 25 pound of mass from your leg, have you got a chance to look at it? I haven't. Why are you afraid you're going to miss those uh, uh, No, I'm lumps? not going to miss it. I've just been a little scared to look at it. All right. I had a friend growing up that got kicked in his nuts on a trampoline by his brother and he lost one of his balls. And uh, after that, we all just called him Obi-Wan Nut. And that just made me think of that because she misses the ball on her leg. Let me look at it and we see how it's healing. All right, that incision is looking very good. Liz That's has good. done very well so far. But she really hasn't had any temptation while she's here. So the big test is going to be whether she can maintain her weight loss back in her... Oh, is this shit going to go really south? Is this why you guys wanted me to see it? I'm here for the messy. Bring it on, baby. Let's go. Her old environment with her enablers. Okay, so your weight now is down to 458 pounds because you have been on a controlled diet for Damn. five months. And now this removal of your lymphedema, you have everything you need to stand and start walking. So we get you That look on her face. What the hell you want me to do, Doc? You want me to do a damn moonwalk for you? I'll moonwalk right into a moon pie when I get my ass home. Going home today, and then we're going to start sending physical therapy to your house three times a week to get you up. Oh, okay then. And I want you to show me that you can stick to the diet on your own and lose 50 pounds over the next two months. Oh, okay. okay, okay. But she doesn't sound as sure of herself as she usually does. But temptation's real, man. You're going to have to learn to fight through it because people had good shit around me to eat all the time. My favorite stuff. I just couldn't have it. And I wanted the damn surgery because I didn't want to keep living that life. If she wants to keep living that life, that's on her. The priority is getting up and standing. Yes, sir. It is mostly fear of pain that is holding Liz back. But she can't afford to stay inactive. Every day she is, her body and her heart gets weaker. And it could be a month or six months, but her time will run out soon. Fear of failure is real, man. And it holds you back so much. But so far, she is just amazingly successful thus far. I don't know. I I mean, I think she's going to struggle a little bit, but I don't see her falling off the wagon, really. At least I hope the hell not, man. I'm going to lose my damn mind if she does. You need to work hard and do this, Liz. Oh, okay. And if you hit this goal, I'll approve you for weight loss surgery. Oh, okay. Sound good? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. I'll see you later. Can I go ahead and grab your stick? Let's do about 10 warm-ups. Don't mind if I do grab my stick. <laughs> The roof okay. is on fire. Okay, push you off. Show me. Raise the roof. And I would have to move this leg off the bed, so... <clears throat> look at that, look at that, look at that, see? Uh you guys probably take for granted putting on your shoes. But if you have ever gotten a cramp trying to put on a shoe, or lost your breath and we're sitting there like <gasps> trying to put on a damn shoe you would understand how great that is right there she's i'm so happy for her in this moment right now a goal look at that come on come on give it up give it up look how look at that wow I 
can't wear yellow anymore, man. Because when I was in school, I did show choir. They made me wear a yellow t-shirt and put on this mask and sing The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. And I mean, they're just kind of trolling me for being fat at that point. So I don't think fat people should wear yellow. And I don't want to sing that song anymore. Excellent. Good, good. How does your leg feel? Good. No pain? A little pain, but it's hard. It, I think it takes longer to heal, too. I don't know why, but it just felt like if I had a cut or something, it took way longer to heal. I don't know all the stuff behind that or anything. Maybe it's like a platelet count or something. I don't know. All right, awesome. Now, let's do some lunging forward. But it's still a pretty painful process. Stretch on your back. Mm -hmm. Good. And it hurts to use my legs at all. What does that do? My 600-pound Hadouken? What the hell is going on here? We're playing Street Fighter? <laughs> because the muscles have a long way to go for their back enough to use them. Good. How about your knees? Let's bring your knees up. Come on, you can do it. Right, good. I love that. I love that. Good. I believe in about a month or so, hopefully less, I'll be able to stand on my own. But to be I am going to be, like, legit happy as hell if she gets to her feet in this episode. And I hope, man, I hope so bad she does. Is that Thin Mints? You better not have no damn Thin Mints. No. What the f is that be able to put that shoe Cereal? on today was a great accomplishment all right all I'll right bye-bye bye-bye also what the hell is that does she have like her upper endoscopy pictures on the wall what the hell is that i want to get weight loss surgery and i'm working hard to hit dr nazardin's goal and do what i need to Things have been harder this past month. Oh, fuck me, Fupa. She found the damn crackers. You know, that's some good buttery shits, too. That's the club crackers right there. And cheese. Cheese is fine. That's low carb, right? High calorie, low carb. But she's gonna sit here and pound some crackers. And, ah. Uh, Liz, you're breaking my damn heart right now. And also breaking your own damn knees because that shit ain't gonna help you anyway on the scale i feel like i'm still doing good but for the past couple of weeks my mom hasn't been feeling well she's just tired and don't want to cook so we eat whatever we have that huzzy she's not it's all her fault right definitely man she the crackers, that has nothing to do... Uber Eats some shit, lady. I get an alert every day for Uber Eats just because I used it once for a crab cake. And lately, we eat a lot of fast food. And then that's what I have because if I don't eat that, then it's really nothing else to eat. Pizza's here. Okay. Oh, shit. The Domino's delivery driver shows up. You wonder, I wonder if like Domino's has ever called the producers at My 600 Pound Life. Stop, you guys put our damn pizzas in every episode. People think that we're making them. Like Domino's gets a bad rap from this show for sure. So it gets hard not to order something that just <sighs> tastes as good sometime. There you go. But that doesn't mean I'm just giving in all the time right now. I'll open this up. But pizza is one of my... Oh, shit, it's thin crust. We're good to go. That's low carb. We're cutting... Yeah, definitely. We're cutting out crust for the carbs. We're good to go. The Domino's diet, here we come. My favorite foods. I know. I shouldn't really be having it, but... It's just some meals. You want me to pitch you some on, on your plate? Mm-hmm. Better share that shit. My mom does so much. And when she's not feeling well... I don't want to add to her burden. Let me see the hot ones. 
Oh, now I know you're a degenerate. You got hot wings from Domino's? Who gets wings from Domino's? They are friggin' tragic. I was 600 pounds and I was never that desperate. I would have got me a frozen bag of Tyson's hot wings any day before I touched those damn things. I know that you're not supposed to have it, but this is just one of them days. I think that it takes time to make the necessary adjustment. Look, I like you, Mama, but she's just got the hell back after being away on a controlled diet. Time is not in her favor, so taking time to adjust ain't really in the uh, horoscope for her, however the hell you want to say it. It's not going to happen overnight. It didn't come upon her overnight. And it's something that we're going to have to work with over a period of time. Maybe it'll be a little bit better than having like a, a meat lovers or something. Ew. Oh, meat lovers is at least low carb. Honestly, you probably could have sit there, pulled the cheese and the meat off and just ate that part and been all right. Don't Domino's make like a weird just cheese and meat thing now for keto probably because of this tv show with the spinach and then the italian sausage you know it's a protein they are bumps serious in the road they are things that we're adapting to but all in all um we're gonna get there Ma'am, this is not a bump. This is a damn mountain. We were 720 effing pounds. Like, we need to put the Domino's wings away because they're breaded. The pizza's got to go. You give her some pepperoni or some sausage, whatever, but make it turkey sausage or tur turkey pepperoni. I know how important it is for me to prove myself to doctor now. And if my two-month follow-up is soon, and I'm still working hard... It's just some meals I have to give in. Damn, we're screwed when we get back to that scale. We're going to have to blame the scale gremlins, the air calories, the water weight, flipper, whoever the hell we got to blame, but you're in trouble, lady. But I feel like I'm still doing well because for most meals, they're exactly what the doctor's diet says I should eat. So I feel confident I'm going to show him enough progress to get approved for weight loss surgery. Bruh, if that's what Dr. Now's diet looks like, sign my ass up. Because I've tried the Domino's diet before, and uh, it didn't work out too great for me, honestly. But uh, I think I could go for club crackers, thin crust pizza, and hot wings all the damn time. Sign me up. I'm back at St. Joseph's Hospital. I'm waiting on doctor now, and I was supposed to lose 50 pounds over the last couple of months. I can't wait to see what these Domino's digits looks like. This shit's going to be great. But I'm a little nervous because I just don't know what the skull is going to say. But I'm hoping that I'll qualify for my weight loss surgery today. Either she's that delusional, or she really believes that thin crust pizza is on Dr. Now's diet book. Hey, Liz. Hello, Dr. Nazon. Well, it's two months since I saw you last time. How are you getting along? Um, I'm doing pretty good. I hear you're still not up and walking, but have you maintained a diet? I do good, and then I, I didn't had a couple of hiccups here and there, but overall I've been trying to stick with the diet. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now, you can do lazy keto and lose weight, right? But if you're going to do lazy keto where you just eat like high calorie, but you don't have carbs and stuff, like it's just a bunch of meat and cheese, at least this is my experience, right? If you mix in a sleeve of them crackers, you are going to gain some weight so fast, it's not even funny because you're mixing in carbs at that point. As long as it's high calorie, low carb still, my experience is you still lose. Just don't touch carbs at all. Like stay under 10. But if you throw in a little bit of carbs, you're screwed. Two months ago, we saw you in here, and you're down to 458. And your weight loss goal was 50 pounds. That should put you at 408 pounds today. So let's see how you did and where you at. No teeter-totter. Uh, you look to be back up over 500 pounds. 
we need to calibrate that thing. This pillow has got rocks in it, Doc. We put some fishing weights in here to troll you. We need to try again. At 508. So instead of losing 50 pounds, you gain 50 pounds. That makes you 100 pounds off of your goal today, and that is unacceptable. How did this happen? I guess still eating some of the things I shouldn't be eating. You still can't walk. No. So are you asking for it, or are they bring it to you? I mean, if they they bring in me food or whatever, certain things, then if that's what we had to eat, then I most of the time. Damn, you're going to throw your mom under the bus? She's on her deathbed, too. You're just ready to th whoever gets in your way, you're going to throw them right in front of the train, huh? Save your ass at all costs. I might eat it. So they help you get it. So we have the same unhealthy dynamic as we did. Nothing is changing. Yes, sir. So here's the situation. It's been seven months since you arrived. We helped you get 150 pounds off in the first month by giving you a diet that was healthy. You go home, you gain weight. Pretty soon, you're going to be back to 721 pounds. I think she might have actually believed she was still doing pretty good because the weight was just falling off her before. But then again, she probably never learned a healthy relationship with food. I never had one. So it's tough, man. You kind of got to work your way into it. I expect some ups and downs. But at the same time, I don't expect you not to try at all. Like, at least kind of hover around the same weight. Don't just gain it all back. This is not good. There is no excuse for this, Liz. For two months, we went over diet every day with you and looked like the, that is went all, all out of window. If you have weight loss surgery and you don't follow diet, you're not going to lose weight. YOLO, Domino's degenerate here. There's no magic in weight loss surgery. And you don't seem to realize how dangerous it is for you to stay in that bed longer. So there is no point of sending you home with any goals because you're not going to hit it. And this next time, that will likely kill you. We have to... Yeah, you don't get to Kazam any of the pounds away. Sadly, I wish David Blaine could help me get rid of some bulge, but it don't work that way. Fix this, and we have to do it quickly. So I'm putting you on a controlled diet again because you don't have any time to waste in your condition. And at this point, we got some serious decision to make about you. Okay. But I'm very disappointed with your lack of progress, Liz. And I'm giving you one month to stand enough to put your weight on your legs and take one step. If you do, then we'll keep working with you. But if you... Uh oh We get ultimatums now? Because I thought she was just kind of getting on easy mode with controlled diet the whole time anyway. All right, so at least we're going to get to see her walk, I hope. Continue to refuse to stand, then we're not going to be able to help you. Okay. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, Liz. Hello. How are you feel? Feeling all right. It's been a month. Are you ready to stand and take a step today? I will see. Liz has been working hard this past month. She worked. One step for the rest of your life is like the craziest thing I've ever heard. Because he's, that's his ultimatum. One step, right? And that's going to like determine the rest of her life. That's nuts. We did that and we have her back down to 448. So her okay. weight loss is in the right track again. The question is whether she's willing to stand today. And if she can't push through the pain and show me that she's willing to do that, then I'll approve her for weight loss surgery. I think the real question is, if she has delivery drivers, how quick is this going to go downhill? Because she's fine when she's in there. I didn't even see her complain once. If not, then we are going to send her home. Because the hospital cannot take care of her forever. Okay. okay. Let's try this. Come on, Liz. Okay, come on. Okay, stand tall. What's hurting? The right leg? Okay. That hurt. 
Okay. You feel like you can try it one more time? I want to see her take this step so damn bad. Come on, walk it out. Let's get the hell up here and get something shaking here. Moonwalk in front of these people. That would be friggin' epic. I can try. You can do it, Liz. Mm. Look at Doctor now being encouraging. Okay. All right, push up, lean push forward. up. There you go. Be able to okay, lean forward. There you go. You're doing good. Great. Okay. Put your fight, on your Liz, arms. fight. Mm, there you go. All right. Good job. First time I've okay. seen you stand. Now okay. just take one step. All right. Come on. Just move your foot and let go. Come on. Move that right leg. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pick it up. Come on. There you go. Come on. There you go. That's the kind of grit I like to see in my chubby contestants. Look at that. Doctor now brings the best out of everyone. I love that damn guy. It's a tiny step, but I'll take it. Good job. How you feel? I feel okay. It's a lot of work for you, huh? Yes, sir. All right, since you're pushing yourself, I'm approving you for weight loss surgery. Thank you, Doctor. So don't call it a tiny step. That was a lunge right there if I've ever seen one in my damn life. She's about ready for the friggin' uh, long jump in the Olympics or whatever here. But after surgery, it's time to work even harder. Yes, sir. You need to keep going, take another step, then another, until you're walking again, okay? Okay. All right, Liz, you're doing great. I'm proud of your effort. Yes, sir. All right. Bye. And keep working. Okay, see you soon. Proud of her. I mean, granted, she's had kind of the easy, like, easy mode process here, right? Because she kind of just gets a controlled diet. She doesn't have to work on it at home, really. Everything's kind of laid out for her, prepared for her. So she's lucky on that front, but she's still got to do it. Like, she can't slip up or do anything. Because I'm sure she can bribe a nurse with a couple bucks or something to bring her a nutty buddy. But she's doing good. You get home, you have physical therapy, right? Mm -hmm, yes, sir. Okay, so you need to start getting up and start walking, okay? That's going to be the important thing that you need to do. And regarding your diet, we're going to stay on clear liquid for another three days. Okay. Only three days. Three days. And then after that, you go to stage two of diet, which is full liquid. Yeah, you're going to have to get real friendly with those sugar-free, great value popsicles. Maybe there's a few other brands that aren't as good, but those were the ones I liked. The ones in the yellow box that say popsicle are freaking trash. They're so bad, but you're going to have to do uh, you're going to have to get up and moving and you're going to have to take those shots like I mentioned before. Just so she doesn't get a blood clot or anything, which would be tragic if she did all this just to get a blood clot. Make sure nobody bring you something solid to eat. We'll give you that, because if you do that, you can damage your stomach and you can create complication. All right, Liz, you're doing great, but by the time that you come to office, make sure that you can stand on a scale and check your weight. So your goal will be when you go home and start walking, okay? Okay. All right. I'll she spent so many years in that bed, though, man. Her legs, like, just the muscles have atrophied so much. I don't think she'll be walking anytime soon. I hope she will. Don't get me wrong. I'm not just like being a hater here or anything, but it's definitely a long road for her, for damn sure. We'll see you then. All right. Liz is recovering well, and we have her weight down a little bit more to 443. But she has weight loss goal of 50 pounds over the next two months. That should be easy as hell for her to hit, though. On a liquid diet, and then she'll get to the part where it's like puree, where you're eating like soft scrambled eggs, maybe a little tuna fish or something. If you chop it up, chew it up real good. That shouldn't be any issue at all for her. And when she come back here for her next appointment, she's going to have to walk to the scales. So starting to walk this next month is her second goal. Liz seems to be completely unaware of her emotions behind her pathological compulsion to eat. So we... Oh, yeah. I, no, she said she was an emotional eater at the start. I think she knows. I just think she ain't really figured out how to deal with them any other way yet. 
going to send psychotherapist to her house so she can start to deal with some of the issues behind her eating to give her a better chance. The surgery will keep her cravings under control for a little while, but they will come back if she doesn't deal with her emotional issues. Isn't that what you do on the water slide or whatever? That's funny. She's happy as hell to get out of there. If that Domino's driver shows up, I'm going to lose my damn mind. So she will have been given every tool possible to help her do this, and there will be no excuse for her to fail. And either she make progress or she's done with this program. Sink or swim, buddy. But I, I, she'll be able to swim because our fat kind of floats. I definitely could float for longer than I'd care to admit. I'm really nervous to be going home right now. Because last time, I didn't do as well as I thought. And I know I can't let that happen again. I told you she really thought she did good before. You really delude the hell out of yourself. And it's all in the like pursuit of that thin crust pizza, buddy. That's keto for sure. Thin crust, it's gotta be. So I'm hoping, since I had the surgery, this time it won't be as much of a struggle. But Dr. Nazardin keeps telling me that this will only be a short-term solution if I don't start dealing with certain issues. Well, that's true, because my doctor said you can eat ice cream the whole time, lose 100 pounds or whatever, but it's all going to come right back like later on. So you have to kind of learn as you go, is my experience. I've seen people gain it all back. I've seen people kind of keep losing and kind of hang out where I'm at, because I just refuse to gain any of it back. And the thought of doing that is making me scared. But I certainly know how strong those cravings and the temptation to eat can be. I want your will to live to be stronger than the cravings for some damn crackers. Because you've lived that life in that room staring at those four walls. You said it at the start. You know what it's like. You know it's hell on earth. You know... Like, what comes with it? So I don't understand why you could say cravings are that strong when you know what the other option is. It just, it's terrible to hear that. Let me know when you get ready for your lunch. Yeah, I'll be, I'm ready for it now. What's your order, ma'am? Um, probably the chicken noodle soup. Will that complete your order? That'll be it. Damn, I, I like her mom when she's actually, like, helping her out. I don't know, mama probably was just as confused with a healthy diet as she was back then. Maybe she really thought she wasn't doing that bad with the chicken wings and dominoes, but that blows my friggin' mind to think that. <laughs> I'll be back in a jiffy. Make it snappy. You know, lately things have been going really well with Liz for her recovery. She's greatly improving day by day. And I think Liz is working double hard to lose this weight she's good maybe she'll be walking and taking care of you in no time also can we get rid of the cinder blocks under the bed at this point she's got to be like in the wood class at this point like the wood weight weighty wood i don't know i can't think of anything funny way to say that one come a long way i haven't cheated since i've had my surgery the kinds of things that I'm eating, I'm like chicken noodle soup, all kind of soups. I just keep on switching up the soups. I just try different soups and then just the broth off of it. Definitely did that too. I kind of worked my way around like some beef stew type stuff, chicken noodle, all that, clam chowder. Just try to get like the low sodium stuff. I, I, soup's great right after the surgery. I am very happy at the level of work that Liz has put in to this. It saved her life. This is a new life, a new Liz. Hot, 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 hot. I got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Emotionally right now, I am doing good. I'm in a good state of mind, good state of my spirits are high. It's good, babe. Do you imagine, though, because she could at least get to her feet 
and just standing up for like that split second that she was up would just mean the world to you. I can't imagine getting bedbound, man. That was the thing that scared the hell out of me. I didn't want to get there, man. I was terrified of that. I want to hit my weight loss goal, and I'm trying to exercise and get to the point where I can walk to the scale, like Dr. Nazorton says, by my next appointment. And I'm also looking forward to the things to come. But Dr. Nazorton has me starting psychotherapy tomorrow. And I'm nervous about that because there are some things I don't feel like I'm ready to talk about yet. When she was laying there in bed at the start, do you think she was on like one of those feeder communities or whatever? Because she could have made a killing the way she was eating at the start. I mean, if I was a woman and I had that kind of weapon at my disposal, I'd be all over that shit getting dudes to pay for my stuff, cash at me, money all the damn time. I'd be like, send me some food. Mommy needs a fill up. Like, it, I, I would go nuts on one of them websites if I was a chick. And I'm having a hard time agreeing that I'm ready for this. So if I ask, how do you feel about yourself? Oh, I mean, I can honestly say I'm ashamed. And that's why I closed myself off. I hadn't been out of my house. I'm ashamed that I let myself let it get this far. Yeah. The I felt that way at one point in time, but uh, now I feel like I'm awesome. I love me some meat. I'm kind of the shit, and eventually you'll get there too. Weight is not about just the food. We know that underneath that this is a symptom of trauma that needs to be healed. The reason why I'm here is to invite you mm -hmm. to take a look at the thoughts, the feelings, the trauma, the sadness, everything that's behind that so you can have a full-on recovery. I kind of like this lady, but she's no Lola in my opinion. No doctor, paradise, pushing pee, anything like that. Just the physical aspect. So what's your goal? My main, main goal is to get back up walking, be able to interact back in the world. The process of full recovery mm -hmm. is to really go on back to look at what's underneath that needs to be healed. And just because mm -hmm. we don't reveal it, and just mm -hmm. because we don't deal with it doesn't mean that it's not the yeah doesn't look at all aspects of who you are you're just not a physical being you a mental look you spend a lot of time scared of what society thinks about you being this overweight but at some point you realize like it doesn't really mean a damn like you're always going to be your own harshest critic the devil's advocate's always going to live inside your head it's you're always going to be so much harder on yourself than anyone else could ever be on you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Trust me, people aren't thinking all the shit. They got their own stuff to worry about. So you're just hard on yourself for no reason when you're overweight, honestly. Being, mm -hmm. and you are a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. I am so inspired by your courage and your boldness to take back your life and uh, do this journey. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I kind of like that. She's trying to build her up there at the end before she gets out of there. She's not half bad. I kind of like that lady. Bye. Bye. Until she said bye like that. What the hell was that? That sounded so weird. Alright. Okay, Liz. You ready to do this? One. Okay, you have your weight on your legs. You okay? Not really. Just sit back now. Sit back. Just sit back. Come on, Liz. It's not how many times you fall down. It's how many times you can keep getting up. This lady's pretty tough, man. She's been through a lot of crap. I really respect her, even if she's just kind of done it all on a controlled diet until she had the surgery. I respect the fact that she just perseveres. There's power in perseverance, for sure. <laughs> What's her name? hurting you. The leg. Left My leg, Kuka. right leg. The right one. <sighs> Liz, you feel weak with your leg or pain? It, it's, um, it's like in the knee when I stand, it be kind of like, like it's going to kind of go out or something. You want to give it another try? I'm gonna try to stand again. Okay. That's you.
Look, I've had arthritis in my knees since I was 13. Being fat does not exactly help your knees, and she already had a leg condition, so I can imagine that this is that much harder for her, so I really feel bad that she's kind of playing on a, like a uneven playing field at this point, because she started... She already had a rough hand dealt at the start, but that don't mean you can't fold and re, like re, get redealt in. Do it again. <sighs> Try to push as hard as you can. <sighs> no, grab the walker. Right? Push in your hand. Push in your hand. Look up. Use those arms, okay? Right there. Right there. Push. Come on, Liz. You're starting to fall. Sit down now. Right there, right there. Doctor now got scared for a second. Like my back is a little too old to be picking up Liz. You better get your ass back on that bed, lady. Okay. Careful about leaning back. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like slide. Yeah. Don't lean. Slide right to the right. left. Slide to the right. You have to have your knee long on the first attempt and twist it a little. So we need to check it out. Yeah. Sit back on the bed so you don't fall. Sit up a little bit. I mean, you definitely could see the transformation in her legs and all that so far. So she's killing it, but she's still got a lot, little ways to go before she can walk. Sadly, I wish she could. <sighs> Okay, Liz, are you having any pain? A little bit. Okay. Well, we're gonna go ahead and see what your bed scale weight is. Okay. Okay, Liz, your weight is at 391. Hey, that's, so that's good. You lost 52 pounds. That's excellent. All right. <laughs> I am happy with Liz's progress today. I think it is likely that she tried to take that first step a little too quickly and pulled something in her knee. But with what I see for her weight loss and how hard she pushed herself to walk, I think she's doing well. I think she's doing more than well at this point. She's got it together. She's almost half the weight she started at. And uh, she's doing the diet by herself at home. So at this point, she could be eating other stuff and kind of sabotaging herself. But it really hurts, man. It doesn't feel good to eat heavy food at first. So she's going to keep losing weight, keep working. I think she'll be walking in no time. At least I hope, man. I'm pulling for her on this one. Now she's recovered. Started physical therapy back up. Giving her a goal. Taking one step and then walking in the next couple of weeks. To be fair, could she have lost that much muscle? She was doing like the wall thing. I didn't see her doing much leg exercises. She got her shoes on. Um, I don't know, man. I don't think she would have lost much muscle. Cause, but maybe it works differently once your muscles have been atrophied. I don't really know. I'm not a doctor. I'm a fifth grade peer mediator. The doctor said he's not letting up until I walk. So physical therapy is coming to my home every day. And I'm sticking with seeing the psychiatrist and trying to work through some of my emotional issues. Good. I know there's a lot around my dad and my childhood. She's stoned as hell. She gotta be. She looks baked out of her mind right there. That I've never really looked at. I just ate. And I know that if I want to stay in control of my cravings, then I have to keep working on all that. Hey, girl. Hey, mama. What's on the agenda for today? I'm gonna do a little therapy. Go try to stand up mm -hmm. and try and see if I can take that step today. I like to hear it. And mama comes in here looking, uh, looking like a million bucks right here. Mama's getting sexy again. Didn't her hair, she did her hair right here and she ain't got no dominoes. I, I like her mom even though she kind of effed it up there for a little bit. Oh, that'll be great. Do, 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 Ms. Evans, do, 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 do. it's Hello. Kendall, the physical therapist. Come on back. Ms. Evans, first Ooh. things first, we got to scoop to the other side of the bed. Okay. 
Caleb, you dirty dog here. Get her on the side of that bed. What are you going to do? We got big goals today. Yeah, I know. Goal number one, standing. Oh, Caleb, drop straight to your knees. You barely know her. Goal number two, if we're standing, might as well see if we can take a step again. Okay, most All definitely. Right. And I see we have a brand new walker here. Yeah, I, mean, I got it today. So, Fresh off the lot. What we want to do is Ugh. whenever you're standing up, mm -hmm. you have to get your weight over your feet, okay? So you have to lean forward. Mm -hmm. Once we get up, we're going to try to tuck that butt in. We're going to mm -hmm. try to get as tall as we can get, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to try to... Why don't you pull it? Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop, man. I, I, too far, a little too far. Rock, mm -hmm. left to right. Because in order to take a step, you're gonna have to get the weight onto that right leg. So first things first, nose over your toes, halfway up, you're gonna reach for the walker. All right, you ready? You got this, Liz. Go, Liz. Two. Up, 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 keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Up, 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 tuck that butt in, tuck that butt in, nice and tall. I really want to buy her a new sheet so bad because it looks like somebody just freaking decimated those damn things. Or is that, uh, what's the woman who had like the spitting cobra thing going on in her pants? Like her crotch had some crotch goblins in it, they were like eating the color out of her fabric. Nice and tall, tuck that butt in, keep coming up, keep coming up. How tall can you get, Liz? How tall can you get, Liz? <laughs> All right, now let's go left to right. Left to Harder right. Harder than you. Keep that head up. Keep that head up, Liz. Keep that head up, Liz. Keep that head up. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Have a sit down. It's terrible to see how much pain she's in, but it also brings me like a great bit of joy to see her pushing herself and trying. That was good. You up? That's a good step. Move that right foot up just a little bit, bring it back, and then we'll sit down. You can do it, Liz. Up, 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 up. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, you're almost there. Come on, come on, come on. Push it, tuck your butt in, tuck your butt in, tuck your butt in, tuck your butt in. Nice and tall, nice and tall. Handsy helper. Nice and tall. Keep coming up, keep coming up. Where's your head? Hold it a little bit, but that's about it. Bring it back. Man, watching her push through this amount of pain because you can see it in her face makes me actually like extremely proud of her because I didn't know she did a, the controlled diet thing. I didn't know if she was going to be okay once she got home, but now I just have a complete amount of faith in her. She'll be fine. Put that way. All right. All right. All right. Have a seat. Have a seat. All right. We got about this much for the right foot forward and backward. Yeah. Keep working on to it. see Liz make that step made me just so happy, so. And right, Mama, she'll be dunking like LeBron next week. Elated, and I'm so glad that I was here to witness it because it makes me feel good to know that she's going to reach her goals. Liz did really, really good. I would really, really just be frapped. Where the hell have you been this whole time, lady? I saw you at the first doing some hip thrust thing with her, and then you were just gone. Well, you were in the operating room when she had that surgery. I have a gas if I could just see her take some steps. Or waiting room. Next I mean. week. I'm not going to push it and say by this weekend, but if she could do something for me by Wednesday of next week, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, we on the road. She tried to get somebody to do some damn chores around that house. She said she could do something for me. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> I'm half the weight I was. I don't have the big lymphedema, and I'm standing again. So it's been wonderful and miraculous, and I know the next couple of months are going to be even more life-changing. And the biggest... She's got a lot of good to look forward to in her life if she just keeps going on this path. Like, things, doors will open up that she thought were closed forever for her. I'm super happy for her. This thing I'm looking forward to is starting to take care of my mom. That's something I should have been doing a long time ago. 
So it's important to start to do that, and I can until I can walk. This she was able to do, that little bitty step. That was a lunge. Again, why is everybody selling her short? I smell. It's painful, but you know, I know it's going to improve. Damn, man. She had to just eat an edible or something before they got here, because this lady is blitzed right now. As I do it more and more and more, you know, yeah. every day, work on it, it'll start to get better, you know. One little step will turn into two, or two will turn into three, three will turn I wonder how weight loss surgery works on the munchies. Like, could she just be chugging chicken noodle right now until she threw up? I'm just kind of curious if it has the same drive to make you want to eat if your stomach's been ripped out. Turn into four, five, six, and yeah. for you know it. I'll be up and about. A wise man once said, the longest journey begins with a single step. Damn right, mama. What you did today was a single step. Single step for the rest of our lives. I've missed out on so much and I'm not going to let that happen anymore. I know I can do this and I will and I'm closer than I've been in 20 years. So nothing's going to stop me from getting to where I need. I like to hear it, man, because Liz, uh, she gave me a little bit of a scare, but as long as she was on that controlled diet, she seemed to do really well. So I'm proud of her. She had a rough start, man, with the whole leg thing and the whole disgusting, vile human being that did that to her at six or whatever. I mean, I feel terrible for her starting out rough, but at least she kind of could take back that at the end, get her own life back, and kind of get out of that whole sad, depressed state that is all too common for people to get up to this weight. And uh, I'm really proud of Liz. I'll check out where she's at today. Hopefully she's kept going. And hopefully her mom's okay and still there and got to see it all the way through since she's on dialysis. But uh, follow my Instagram and Twitter, Shauna Steele with some underscores in it. And uh, I appreciate you guys for being here. I'll see y'all later. Bye.